Hey everyone, hope you're keeping safe and uh, studying deep learning. In this video, we're going to continue the data science interview question series. So the theme of this video is going to be numerical stability. If you've written any code in TensorFlow or PyTorch in the past five years, you will have encountered some funny looking loss functions. We know that when we do the math, let's say we're doing multi-class classification, we want to end our neural network with a softmax activation. This will give us the posterior probabilities and then we can plug those into the categorical cross entropy loss as defined in our class. But we know that from our experience with TensorFlow or PyTorch, while this is what we do in theory, it's not what we do in practice. Instead with TensorFlow and PyTorch, we usually output what are called logits. Basically, these are the values you get before applying the final activation, such as a softmax or a sigmoid. Then you'll call these functions with ridiculously long names, such as softmax cross entropy with logits v2. So your data science interview question of the day is why do we need to do things this way? And if we do, how do we implement something like this ourselves? What are the relevant equations? How do we compute the cross entropy from the logits without having to explicitly do a softmax. So first let's answer the question, why do we do things this way? The answer is that it ensures numerical stability. But why is numerical stability an issue? The answer is exponential growth. As you know, exponential growth is faster than any polynomial. So you might think x squared is pretty bad. Well, x3 is actually worse. x4 is even worse and x to the 1000 is extremely bad. But the exponential function is unique because it grows faster than all of these. And why is that a problem? Well, if you plug in a number into the np.exp function and the input is too large, the answer will not be accurate and any computation you do thereafter will be wrong. That's why you'll often see NANs or infinities in naive implementations of the cross entropy. Now you might ask, why are numbers that are too large not accurate? And the reason for that is, numbers have to be represented in computer memory in a finite amount of space. That usually means 32 or 64 bits. That means you only have 32 or 64 binary numbers to represent your number. And of course that can't represent an infinite amount of numbers. And this problem also occurs when numbers get too close to zero. So not only do you have to worry about very large numbers, you also have to worry about very small numbers as well. As an exercise, you can try to figure out the limits of what your programming language can represent. What's the biggest number that can be represented in your favorite programming language? And what's the smallest number? The next question is, now that we know the naive calculation is numerically unstable, how do we actually make it stable? Although we don't take the softmax directly, it's helpful to consider how we would calculate the softmax in a numerically stable way. Let's suppose we have a neural network with three output activations, A1, A2, and A3. We want to take the softmax of these elements, which involves exponentiating each element. We know that if we exponentiate a number that's too large, it will explode to infinity. Well, the solution is this. I claim that if I subtract some constant c from each of the elements a1, a2, and a3, it won't change the answer. Let's see why. So as you can see, if I take the softmax of each element minus a constant c, we get the exponential of minus c on both the top and bottom, and therefore the result is still the same because they cancel out. The trick is to make this constant c equal to the maximum of a1, a2, and a3. In this way, we can avoid exponentiating numbers that are too large. In fact, the maximum value we would exponentiate if we subtracted the max first would be zero. Okay, but we know that we don't actually want to do the softmax, but rather the softmax and the categorical cross entropy. We can start by writing down the formula for the categorical cross entropy. Then we can replace the output probability with the actual softmax expression. At this point, you can see how we might simplify this. We know that the log of a ratio is just the difference of the logs. 
We also know that the log of an exponential of something is just that thing, since the log and the exponential are inverse functions. If we simplify our expression by expanding the log, this is what we get. As you can see, we end up with two terms. One of the terms is just tk times ak, and it's easy to see why that's numerically stable. It's just a linear function of the ak's. It's harder to see why the other term is numerically stable. First, we can see that the tk actually gets canceled out because none of the terms depend on small k, so they can be brought outside the sum. Then, we can use the fact that these are classification targets, so the sum of the tk's over k is always 1. Therefore, we just end up with the log of the sum of the exponential of the aj's. The question again is, why is this numerically stable? In fact, it looks pretty unstable because it still has an exponential. In fact, this functional form is so popular that it has a name. We usually call it the log sum exp function. This function shows up everywhere in machine learning, basically anytime you're working with log probabilities, which is nearly everywhere. Luckily, we can use the same trick as we used for the softmax to understand why this is actually not unstable. So what happens if we take some constant c and subtract it from the activations? Well, we can use the product of exponentials rule to separate the c term and then bring that outside the sum since it's constant. Then we can use the log of products rule to separate the c term again, and we see that all we end up doing is subtracting c. Therefore, by rearranging this equation, we see that it's also possible to make the log sum exp function numerically stable by subtracting a constant c from the exponent and then re-adding the same constant c as a linear term. By doing this, we can ensure that we never exponentiate a number that's too large. And again, we usually pick a number like the maximum activation for the constant c, so that the maximum exponent will be zero. Now, that was pretty detailed, so let's make sure we understand the big picture. As you recall, we came up with a term that combines the cross entropy with the softmax, so that the loss can be calculated from the logits directly. That's what we're using the letter A for. And remember, this is exactly what libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch do. And although it does not look numerically stable because of the exponential, it actually is numerically stable, since there are numerically stable ways of computing the log sum exp function. The other term is just linear, and so there are no problems with that. Finally, we can use what we just learned to come up with an alternative formulation. Initially, I said that we can use the logits directly, and then calculate the cross entropy from the logits. So one alternative formulation is that instead of the logits, we use the log softmax in place of the softmax. After which, we can define a cross entropy function in terms of the log softmax rather than the logits. So let's see how that works. The trick is, we see that if we take the log of the softmax function, we immediately get the log sum exp. Now we know that this can be numerically stable if computed correctly, so it's okay to keep it in this form. The reason for this is, the cross entropy function is actually defined in terms of a log of the posterior probability, which is exactly the log softmax. Therefore, it's just a linear function of the output of the log softmax. If we call the result of the log softmax u, then it's just the sum of all the tk's multiplied by the uk's. To summarize this lecture, here's what we did. First, we began by asking the question, why do libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch not use the softmax function and the cross entropy directly, but instead have special functions that combine them by taking in the logits or the log probabilities. The answer was that performing the softmax and cross entropy as defined leads to numerical instability. In order to eliminate this problem, we first looked at a numerically stable way to calculate the softmax. The trick involves subtracting a constant term from the activation before applying the softmax function.
Next, we looked at the cross entropy and rearranged it until we got it into a form that involved a linear term and the log sum exp function. Then we demonstrated how the log sum exp function could be calculated in a stable form by using the same trick we used to calculate the softmax. Finally, we looked at an alternative formulation that uses the same trick, except it expresses the cross entropy in terms of the log posterior probabilities rather than the posterior probabilities directly.